Ladies and gentlemen, there is one major political headache which Raila Odinga is facing currently. The ODM nominations. I want us to look at the ODM nominations and why it is giving Raila Odinga political headache. I'm going to concentrate more specifically in Nyanza. But take for example the case of Mombasa. Between Nasir and Shabal, who should carry the ODM flag? You go to Nairobi, who should carry the gubernatorial flag in Nairobi? Raila Odinga is facing one of the biggest political headache in the name of ODM nominations. And he's been trying to confront it head on. But I don't think the efforts are paying off. Because if the ODM nominations are not going to be managed well, then Raila Odinga is going to face the biggest apathy ever witnessed, especially in Nyanza. ODM party has three types of uh, nominations. The first one is normally direct nominations. The party can sit down and agree that in Kisumu Central or in Nyakanch, they are going to give Lima Queen because he can speak in Bunge. Or they can say that in uh, Kisi, for example, we are going to give this particular candidate the ticket because of reason A, B, C, D. It happened in 2000 and, uh, was it in 2002 during the NAC? I mean, during the LDP era, it again happened in 2007 during the ODM nominations where several candidates were just issued direct tickets either because they were summit members and the rest. But the modern voter, the current voter, after the advent of devolution are now more clear on what they want. In the last election, for example, the ODM party decided to spend a lot of their time in Nyanza because they didn't conduct proper nominations. So they can issue direct nominations to the candidates they want. Voters might not be in agreement. The second method of nominations is normally the delegates. Again, this one failed. I remember during uh, the, the senatorial by election in uh, Homa Bay, ODM tried the delegates method. And Karolio Mondi, who had the money, took all the party delegates and took to Tanzania. <laughs> by the time, the party realized it was late. So delegate method is also applicable where only party officials are allowed to elect the candidate. This one is prone to misuse. Then there is the third one, which most people associate with, the universal suffrage. In this case, every party member are allowed to go on that particular day and choose the candidate of their choice. This is what most people advocate for. But then Relu Dinga has been trying to talk about negotiated democracy, which personally I tend to also agree with him. There's something which normally happens in this party, which personally I agree with Raila Odinga. There is no way for a whole four years, some people have been carrying the burden of the party on their back. Then a few months to the elections, someone comes from nowhere with money, an avroga, then he carries the day. That's not how democracy is supposed to be. I want to just use the case of Kerenyaga, for example. Purity Girishi carried UDA in her back, on her back. Waiguru, who was opposed, came last minute. Today, she's more UDA than Girishi. So those four methods can be used by the ODM party. But how can they be used without creating apathy, without annoying the voters? You know, devolution opened the eyes of majority of Kenyans. They now understand that resources are actually down here. So they are saying, for example, we can vote for you as Raila Odinga. But for the governor, for the MP, for the MCS, if you play around, we can do whatever we want. The problem with that is that they end up electing people who don't understand what the party, for example, stands for. 
Now let us dive into Nyanza why it's giving Raila Odinga headache. Let's begin with Kisi. In Kisi, Simba Rati has already decided he's not going to go back to Gudagoriti North. Simba Rati is going to go for the Kisi Kubanuturo seat. Then there is Sam Ongeri. Sam Ongeri is being supported by the sitting governor, Governor Ngwai. So we have those two gentlemen. Simbarati has the ability to mobilize campaign and even thwart. In fact, Simbarati can thwart William Ruto's forays into the larger Mount Kenya region. But Samongeri has proved over the years that he's loyal, he's tried, and he's tested. So how do you convince Arati was teamed up with the, with the, with the Richard Onyonka? How do you convince them to step down for Arati? I mean, for uh, Ongeri. How will Raila Odinga manage Kisi? Let's say they'll go for nominations. Simba Rati, being an Arabi politician, use, will decide to use the, the methods he knows. Ongeri will lose. Do you think Ongeri will, will take it lightly? Or take it the other way around? And how will they manage it? So that's a political headache which Raila Odinga is dealing with in Kisi, for example. You make a mistake, the opponents take advantage of it. Let's move to Homa Bay. <laughs> Here's where the biggest political headache for Raila Molodinga resides in. In Homa Bay, if elections were to be held today without any political interference, Gladys Wanga will be declared the next governor for Homa Bay. But there is John Badi, <laughs> the ODM chairperson. John Badi has also declared his interest for the same seat. How will Raila Odinga handle Mbadi in case Gladys Wanga defeats him? Then there is Evans Kidero, who shifted the base from uh, Nairobi and moved to Homa Bay. Evans Kidero has the money. He can really cause a lot of confusion in the, in the region. How will Raila Odinga manage Kidero? Then there is Oyugi Mangwanga. In the last election, Oyugi Mangwanga actually defeated the governor Awete free, free, fair, and transparently. But there was a challenge. He was denied the ticket. ODM, as a political party, had to go back to the drawing board. What do you want? Go and play there. Go, no, go inside. Go inside. Tete. Prince. Jamal, go, go, go and play outside there. Okay. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> they had to spend, sorry, they had to spend a lot of their time campaigning and they had to form what they were referring to as Nyanza Presidential Campaign Team, specifically because of the vote nomination. So Uyugi Magwanga is there. He's coming to ODM. Then there's Isaiah Ogwe, a guy who has been credited for delivering victory to the current governor over the years. How will Relu Dinga and the ODM party manage the nominations, the gubernatorial nominations? We are talking of the gubernatorial in Homa Bay. How will they negotiate? How can you convince Gladys Wanga to go back to either Rangwe or to go back to Women Rep? Or how do you convince Mbadi that Gladys Wanga or Evans Kidero has defeated him and therefore he's just a nobody. How will you convince Kidero? Because if you give Gladys Wanga the ticket, the other men, I'm sure, and they're planning this, are going to gang up. Because they are saying the next governor should be a man. You know the, the kind of uh, mentalities we still have, that the next governor should be a man. How are they going to manage that? If you have an idea on how Raila Odinga and Odium Party is going to manage this, please let me know. Let's go to Migori. Migori is sorted. That one I can guarantee you. Ochila Yako is going to be the ODM candidate and Ochila Yako is going to be the next governor for Homa Bay. I mean for Migori. That's sorted. Let us go to Kisumu. Kisumu is done. Professor Nyang Nyongo is going to be given the ODM ticket. The senator, Ota, can do what he wants. He can say what he wants. He will not get. But in Kisumu, there is the small matter of uh, the Senate. Who is going to be the senator? 
the ODM party according to my sources have the preference on uh, Ross Nyamunga while on the ground Tomo Gianda is actually creating a wave how do you deal with Tomo Gianda those who don't want Rogianda are saying that Tomo Gianda is a top lawyer in this country in his entire life he has never represented ODM as a political party in any legal matter and therefore he's just here for his own reasons but denying Ojianda a ticket is going to cause a lot of problem and trouble for one man called Professor Anyangnyongo. Because Professor Anyangnyongo intends to have a Willy who comes from Nyakach. Ojianda also comes from Nyakach. He intends to, to have a Willy as his running mate. Which means Nyakach cannot have a running mate, a deputy governor, and a senator at the same time. So it means one of them will have to be sacrificed. Who will be this person? Trouble there. You go to Siaya. Where? Now is where the mother of all problems is. James Orengo is coming from the Senate, going down to Siaya. Personally, if I were a voter in Siaya, I would take my vote, cast it for Orengo. Because, for example, Nyongo has been tested and tried in Kisumu as a reformist, and we've seen what he can do. But Orengo is facing almost a similar challenge because he's facing Nicholas Gombo. Nicholas Gombo almost won in the last election. Are, his supporters believe he was rigged out. He's still there, coming. Then there's Charles Owino. The challenge Orengo has is that if the nominations will not be managed well, and this is why I pray ODM nominations should be managed well, so that Orengo becomes a clear winner. Because Orengo has never lost elections, what will happen is that there's a chance of Owino and Gumbo teaming up. And therefore, Gumbo will become a, a, a candidate, an independent candidate, probably deputized by Owino. That would be a serious ticket. So it means Odima's political party must agree. Because according to the information I have, is that Orengo is likely to pair with um, William Odwal. That would be a good ticket. But as much as Orengo will easily win or will win, the challenge is going to face from Gumbo is serious. Is there a way Raila Odinga can reach out to Gumbo? Tell him, for example, go back to Rarieda or come to Senate. Because if Gumbo were to come to Senate, for example, he will easily win Senate and deliver the votes to Orengo. Then Owino can be told, carry the ODM flag in Ugenya. <laughs> Ugenya is where the MDG candidate is. I mean, the NDG leader is. So the plan is that Gumbo, Oweno, are likely, if ODM party will make the nomination, they'll go, they'll go with the MDG of, uh, of uh, Ochien, Honorable Ochien. That will be trouble, which I foresee. And you know, sometimes when people feel that they're being robbed, even if you are not robbing them, then they tend to rebel. And this is why, what caused a lot of trouble for the ODM as a political party in the last election. And it's, it's not only confined to Nyanza, it's across. You go to Mombasa, you go to Kilifi, you go to Kakamega, for example, you go to Busia, between uh, Otuo Mapol and Mama Moja, Flores Motoa, who will carry the ODM flag. You know, so Raila Odinga must be very careful with how they are going to conduct their ODM nominations. For me, I'd go for negotiated democracy, democracy, but everybody must emerge the winner. If it will not happen, let the people decide. But a political party cannot conduct a free and fair elections, which everybody will be happy about. Because ultimately, there's a feeling that whoever will be given the ODM ticket, that's the next governor, the next member of parliament. So the ODM nominations is one of the biggest dilemma which Raila Odinga is facing as we speak. I don't know what to think. Let me hear your thoughts. I don't know which county you are watching me from. If you're watching me from the counties which I've mentioned, please let me know your thought. Who do you think is likely to be your next governor? Drop the comments now. I'm going to take a few minutes to read. Tomorrow I'll be in Nairobi. I'll attend Raila Odinga's uh, birthday party. I've been invited. So, if you see me in Nairobi, just say hi. Again, we can have a coffee if time will allow. I intend to travel again in the evening. Thank you guys and may you have 
a good day bye bye